John Bluestein is CEO of Heartland Brewery and a successful entrepreneur. In 1995, John opened the Tri-State region's largest brew pub, Heartland Brewery, and was an instant success. Now, the Heartland Brewery is synonymous with igniting New York City's passion with crafted beer. In fact, it's my favourite subject. And in 10 years, John has built the largest urban brewery group in the world. John, you have the best job in the world, don't you? It's good to have and it's good to be here. Thanks for having me, Mike. How did you get into this business? I mean, you, you have a brother who makes coffee. Did he get the short end of the straw? Actually, interestingly, that's part of the way that I got involved in beer. Mm. Because he and I were working together on and off. Well, I had a, a regular job in mergers and acquisitions. and. We were working together on weekends. I was managing one of his several local New York stores. It predated Starbucks by many years. And I was going to, this was in the late 80s, I was going to expand those for him, with him. Mm -hmm. And it turned out he really didn't want any part of that. And so uh, I was left deciding what to do, not wanting to be in mergers and acquisitions my whole life. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really working out the way I had hoped. I wanted to do something a little bit more gratifying, like drinking a beer and serving beer to people who enjoy the beer. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I ended up doing is doing an investigation into what made him a success, and it was basically that he had a, a very socially habit-forming beverage and something that people couldn't live without. And I went on to explore things such as sugar, such as tobacco, such as gambling, mm -hmm. such as liquor and, and beer and things like that. And in my travels around the country in mergers and acquisitions, I constantly found myself in the Bay Area and in the Rocky Mountain states in these great brew pubs, mm -hmm. which we had not at that time in New York. We had one or two. They were not great. And uh, they were deregulated on the West Coast and in Colorado far before New York. Mm -hmm. So they were way ahead of us. And they were so comfortable and so down to earth that you felt like you didn't want to leave. And there was so much about the product that was great and the brewers would come over with these boots on and talk to you about they'd be making things like sweet potato stout and raspberry ales stuff we didn't even know about here the one or two brew pubs in town here looked like restaurants with little breweries mm -hmm. these looked like you know great fun branded you know recreation machines so uh, I liked it and obviously there is some social component, it's habit forming, it's water based, it's profitable and if you do it right it can be very satisfying. One hand you have the business mind, on the other hand you have the love for beer. Oh yeah. Do both work well together or should you when or should you not talk business after consuming your business? That that's exactly why it works. Mm -hmm. The business, the passion and the the love for innovation. Mm. You know, we love to come up with fun and different things to do, even though we're basically the only, you know, brew pub group in New York City, mm -hmm. we're constantly looking for ways to reinvent ourselves and make ourselves different than the average pub on the corner, mm -hmm. where you can also get a beer and a great burger or a piece of salmon or a steak. What sets us apart is this uniqueness. You have some great names for beers. One that comes to mind is Mother's Milk. Well, I figured that was a name that would make people feel like they couldn't live without it. And uh, you know the graphics of it are a little bit r risque. We have fun with, with a lot of these mm. things. We have a Bavarian black lager that's you know an, an image of a, a dominatrix mm. with a, a man. And it's on our glassware. It's on our advertising with a man in a mask stoop behind her with a stein of beer balanced on the small of his back. It's just good, clean fun. Mm. Beer is fun. Mm. Once you get a beyond that, mm -hmm. you know, why would people want to come here? You know, because we're really serious about our beer. Mm. Yeah, we're seriously about making great beer with great ingredients mm. that's innovative and fun. But if it's not going to be a good time, it's like, why would I want to come to mm. work? Who chooses the names? I mean, and who chooses the brew? Do you, do you actually sit there, boardroom, with a recipe, grandma's recipe or something, and do you have glasses and you do taste test or and pick out the names? Oh, this reminds me of mother's milk. It comes from a few different places. Some of it just comes straight out of my head. You know, one Saturday morning when I'm not under the stress of running around the restaurant, mm -hmm. I'll sit down and say, hmm, what sounds good? And other times, uh, the brewer will say, I want to do our first time ever Hefeweizen. And I have to think of hmm, what goes with that. Or I'll say, well, the assistant brewer is a little bit twisted. Ask him for a good name. <laughs> but it has to be a name that people, that sticks with mm -hmm. people. It can be as simple as something like our smiling pumpkin ale. 
which people remember, or a summertime apricot ale. We do taste test beer. We, the brewer, Kelly, will come in, mm -hmm. and I'll say, well, let's come up with... A, we came up with a berry champagne ale, for instance. Mm -hmm. We came up with the name because we were designing a beer specifically designed for women that don't like the flavor of beer. It was going to be a substitute for Cosmopolitan's and Pinot Grigio. Mm. So we were, we had four or five beers, and we were blending Schneiderweiss and Lindemann's Frambois and <laughs> this, and say, look, that's it. But over and beyond that, we came up with a 12-ounce champagne flute mm -hmm. so that the women could enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It's not like putting your hand around a pint glass. And we came up with a designer to do the graphics. It's a former legwear and shoe designer mm. from Kenneth Cole. Even the, the advertisements on the street today that are out that promote the Berry Champagne Ale, guys don't even look at it because mm. it looks like a fashion ad. It doesn't look like a beer ad. Mm. But the women report having seen it because they thought it, it was for uh, some kind of a fashion product. Mm. So we sort of try to think along those lines of being a little bit different, a little bit more innovative. Mm. But there has to be... Uh, great quality in the product at the end of the day. Is it the quality of the product that makes this place so great? Or is it the marketing? Or is it the business acumen behind it? Or all combined? I mean, It's really a combination. The location has to be correct and accessible. Mm -hmm. And we're in the Empire State Building. It's hard to go wrong here. So uh, I get more conservative and risk averse with so location selection as I grow the business. Mm -hmm. Uh, so location is very important. The concept is very important to have a very clear image so customers know exactly what you are mm. before they walk in, as they walk in, after they're in. It's all consistent. Mm -hmm. We're an American brew pub. We use most of the American ingredients. Yep. We serve buffalo and we serve you know, th th things from the Midwest and mm. Red Rooster Ale. It's all sort of consistent. Uh, but if the business side isn't right, there are restaurants in New York that will do phenomenally well for two or three years and you'll think you can't get a reservation and then they suddenly close. Why? Why do they close? They close because either the rent's too high or the rent wasn't negotiated properly or because uh, the payroll was, was too high because it wasn't managed properly. It's because the chef was running 40% food costs because they, because they didn't have control over those things. Could be any number of things. Uh, it could simply be that if the concept was wrong, it wouldn't be crowded in the first place. But the most dis disheartening thing for me to see is a restaurant that sales line is great somewhere, and they close because they, they had no control over their expenses. How many other restaurants or brew pubs do you have? There's a total of five Heartlands right. under a few different names. They're all Heartlands, mm. but the one we're sitting in now is Heartland Brewery and Rotisserie. Mm. There's a Heartland Brewery and Chop House, Heartland Brewery wow. and Barbecue, and two just standard Heartlands. Mm -hmm. We found it important to put uh, uh, a food, uh, a restaurant associated with it somehow mm. so that people that were not familiar with us or were tourists wouldn't think we were just a bar, couldn't bring the kids in, nothing to eat. Mm -hmm. So we, we added that component, which seemed to work. What about the future for your company? Where to next? Well, that's a great question, because New York is, is very tough, real estate-wise. Mm -hmm. I mean, in 2007 alone, retail rents averaged increases of 26%, and that's across the city. That's not in the better premium locations mm -hmm. where we look. So the, the rents are just very difficult. Mm -hmm. And only recently, with the, the uh, R word, the recession, kicking in and the developers being concerned about uh, you know national chains not coming in that I start to get a lot of calls mm -hmm. we have two offers in the local suburbs yes. in New York within you know an hour of here mm -hmm. and we have two offers in in two local hotels in the city which we're very optimistic will you know be open in uh, probably fall of 2009 mm -hmm. and uh, we're also looking at the possibility of doing a European beer hall Something like that. Fantastic. Yeah, I mean, you can't put you know ten heartlands in one city; it just doesn't make sense. I would love to be the the quality controller. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'd, I would last about maybe a year. I'd have a, you know, I'd probably drop dead. But what a lifestyle! For a few years, you sort of, you know, go a little crazy, and mm. then you really have to get a balance, mm. or you don't have much of a lifestyle left. If somebody wants to though to enjoy, say for example here, Empire State Building most famous building in the world just about. Yeah. Somebody wanted to enjoy a good beer and to eat something, what would you suggest? My favorites change 
you know, by the weather. Yep. I would say, you know, it's a little warm outside. I, I would I would start with uh, one of our specialties, buffalo chicken spring rolls, mm -hmm. which are made with wonton skins. We make them right here. Comes with two dipping sauces. It comes with a cool blue cheese ranch sauce and a hot dipping sauce. Low fat. Oh, right. <laughs> no, but the beer cuts through it, so it feels like it's low fat. And then I, I would match that up with our Indiana Pale Ale, which is an American version of uh, the Indian Pale Ale, obviously, which is hoppy, a little bit bitter. It cuts right through the, the heat and any of the fry or the, uh, the, the blue cheese dressing. And that's nice. And then I might follow up with a... Uh, American bison strip steak, mm -hmm. which is actually very low in fat and very high in iron. And I would match that up with probably uh, a red rooster ale, mm -hmm. which is a nice balanced amber ale that uh, you know balances out the richness of the beef and uh, also complements the, uh, the barbecue sauce we make in-house that goes mm -hmm. with that. And then for dessert, I'd probably have uh, a Farmer John's oatmeal stout. Mm -hmm. It won several medals in the Great American Beer mm -hmm. Festival in Denver and was named Best Stout in New York State at the New York uh, State Fair last year. And it's a very rich, uh, creamy uh, beer that tastes as, as uh, sort of tones of chocolate and espresso. There's no yeah. chocolate or espresso in it. It's the way the malted barley is roast, similar to mm -hmm. the way coffee is roast. Mm -hmm. And I'd match that up against a warm Toll House cookie pie <laughs> that has uh, cinnamon ice cream. It sounds delicious. Actually, I've put on weight listening to you. Yeah. How would you describe your business in a word, from a consumer's point of view and then from a business point of view? Well, from a consumer's point of view, it's, it's almost like getting sustenance, sustenance, education and recreation mm -hmm. at the same time. Because mm -hmm. you come in and eat and drink, it's mm -hmm. very accessible, it's not, it's not prohibitively expensive, it's very reasonable. You learn things about beer, our staff are trained. And it's a fun place. That's from the consumer's point of view. As it, from the business point of view, it's uh, of all the things I've ever done, I've done a bunch of different things in business. This is certainly the most challenging and engaging. Mm -hmm. Not the brew pub business per se, because this is, I think this is a lot more fun than a regular restaurant would mm -hmm. be. But the restaurant business in general is extremely challenging and engaging mm -hmm. with all the different components that you have to be balancing at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if I didn't have the brewery side of it and that to have fun with, I don't think it would be the same for me. If somebody wanted to find out more about this fantastic organization, what's your website? Oh sure, heartlandbrewery.com. And in a word, how would you describe doing business in New York? One word. One word? One word. A piece of cake. Piece of cake. It's three, but that's okay. Hyphenated. <laughs> piece of cake. Piece of cake. John, thank you very much. A pleasure <laughs> chatting with you. Thank you. Thanks for having me.